Well, welcome to our live webinar 2.0 series. My name is Nicola Pomponio. Thank you so much for taking the time to log in. The 2.0 series takes a closer look at the smaller production wines of each estate. We are so excited to be able to virtually travel to France, and we will be visiting again Alfred Gracien Champagne House in Epernay with Nicolas Gégé, fourth generation winemaker at Alfred Gracien. Welcome, Nico Nicolas. Well, welcome and hello, everybody. Excuse, uh, thank you for coming. Nicola, okay, tell, well, tell us where you are. Uh, where are you currently? I'm, uh, this is my home. It's a very nice place because uh, I'm in the middle of the vineyard on these seven houses uh, here around the mine. Just back me, you can see the vineyard from the Valley de la Marne. We are just in the middle of the Valley de la Marne. This is uh, not my vineyard, you see, but my vineyard is just under. This is uh, the Pinot Meunier. This is a nice place for the best Pinot Meunier in, uh, in Champagne. Um, tell, us uh, a bit, tell us a little bit about uh, the story of the winery. Let's start at the beginning. Very small house in Champagne because we produce only 300,000 bottles. Uh, for uh, give you an idea, we are very small. Moëté uh, is million, million, million bottles, more 40 million, for give you an idea. I'm a lucky boy because I'm the full generation of my family. Work for uh, Alfa Gracia. On my Instagram, I put a picture of my father and my uh, my grandfather. Uh, teach him, and uh, Alfred Gracia is uh, very special, very unique, because we have a nice, nice, nice fidelity with our grower for many generations. This is very, very important. I think the quality of the wine starts with. Uh, a uh, nice grapes. Uh, you can uh, like uh, uh, a man make uh, a cooker. Excuse my English. Maybe you can help me. But a man make uh, work in the kitchen uh, must have a good ingredient to make a nice uh, plate or nice food. Is exactly the same for the wine. We must have a good grapes. Uh, good grapes from Côte des Blancs. We work with the Grand Cru La Côte des Blancs uh, Chardonnay grapes. Good grapes from La Montagne de Reims, Pinot Noir, and good grapes from La Vallée de la Marne in Pinot Meunier. Uh, we are lucky because we are just in the middle of the three principal regions, Mont Valley, Montagne de Reims, and Côte des Blancs in Epernay. We are just in the middle. For me, it's very easy. If you have a map of Champagne, you can uh, look around Epernay. You have the principal region, the best place to have the grapes, and it's not too far for me because if I want to... Uh, say uh, if, if if when we move the grape juice because when we buy grapes and we pay for press the grapes only the grape juice come uh, uh, in the winery but when we buy the grape juice we drive only 40 kilometers and it's very good for no oxidate the, the grape juice this is very nice and uh, if you have some questions <laughs> i don't know what do you want <laughs> Why, why are you so in love with, uh, with the winery and champagne? Tell, tell us a little bit about that. I love because it's, uh, it's my heart. <laughs> it's my heart because uh, uh, always with my father and before with my grandfather, we spoke about Alfred Gracia and Champagne. Uh, this is very, very traditional house. Not only because Jager family, because uh, we work in wood. We produce all the wine in wood. Uh, we don't do malolactic fermentation. We have very, very special uh, tradition to work for uh, for Alfred Gracien. And this is why we are very, very special. Uh, for give you an idea, now the house in Champagne work in big uh, tanks, uh, in st stainless steel tanks, you say? I don't know. Big one. Uh, Alfred hey. Gracien work in small borrow only 228 liter, and we can separate all the grapes. When I say all the grapes, it's not only the grapes Chardonnay, the grapes Pinot Meunier, or the grapes Pinot Noir. We, see, we separate the grapes, like many Surogé in Chardonnay, Cramont in Chardonnay, but in Cramont, I have different growers, grower from Mr. Labrier, grower from Mr. Lancelot. In many surrogés, you have my grapes, you have grapes from Mr. Labrier too, grapes from Mrs. Casal, but we can separate all the grapes and uh, we do uh, fermentation and vinification in wood. The wine stays six months in wood and in these six months, we invite the grower to test their wine. And for with this, we have a very nice fidelity because uh, 
uh, for me, like me, uh, Guara is a, is a farmer. A farmer is very proud of his, his wine, he's very proud of his work. And when you test with him, the, the, the wine come from the grapes. This is very nice. We are very, very unique in Champagne, really. Not only because uh, it's not marketing, <laughs> it's really the, the, the true. We are very unique uh, house brand in Champagne. This is, uh, these are uh, great facts that you mentioned because when we are out selling the wine, it's just really nice to be able to walk in and speak uh, just as you're speaking about all of the wonderful facts about the, uh, the wine, especially the style. Uh, tell us a little bit about the Grand Cru and Premier Cru fruit that you use. Yes, this is very important because I spoke about we can make a good wine with the good grapes. Of course, uh, we buy a lot of grapes in Grand Cru and Premier Cru. For give you an idea, in Champagne, if you look Champagne region, uh, around 20% uh, represent Grand Cru and Premier Cru. Alfred Gracia bought the, the grapes come from 60%, sometime more, but minimum 60% about Grand Cru and Premier Cru. And when you buy, of course, a Cuvée Paradis, or Blanc de Blanc Grand Cru is only Grand Cru, uh, but Cuvée Paradis, we use only Grand Cru and Premier Cru. But into the, the, the Brut Classic, you have a lot of Grand Cru and Premier Cru, more 50%. This is one of the reasons we are different, and uh, we are different because we don't do malolactic fermentation. And with a good grapes, work in the borrow, but you must have a good grapes when you work in the borrow, because we want support the wine with the borrow, but we don't want the, the borrow take place of the wine. And uh, if you have a small quality, it's impossible to make a good wine in the borrow. And for this, we have a very strict, on the, rigorous, excuse my English, uh, selection about the grower and they work with us for many, 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 many years. Some grower is a handshake every year. They do a handshake with my father. They continue with me. Some grower prefer have a, something more safety and we sign a contract for five years with us, but uh, uh, they continue and it's very rare when we lose a grower work with uh, Alfred Gracia. If we don't match, we uh, we prefer uh, quit very quickly. Fantastic. What's uh, can you can you give us like a, a quick maybe a few a one paragraph answer to the differences between the Grand Cru fruit and the Premier Cru fruit? Uh, is that something that you can maybe uh, kind of give us a little bit of a understanding of? Uh, regularly, uh, when you test, uh, is very interesting because in in our share. When we test the wine, you, you understand all the wine we keep separate. I can have 10 borrow from Cramont, 10 borrow from Meni sur Roger in Grand Cru, but I can have a Cumière, Pinot Noir, Premier Cru, uh, very separate. When you test the, the, the Grand Cru on the pre Premier Cru, you have really an idea about the, the, the edging potential. Uh, so a lot of time with, uh, you have more minerality, because when you speak, when I speak about La Côte des Blancs, this is Chardonnay's grapes. This is not only La Côte des Blancs because it's Chardonnay's grapes. This is La Côte des Blancs because the soil is very calcaire. The white, uh, the white uh, chalk, uh, if you uh, pick on the soil, uh, maybe uh, less than one meter, you have the chalk immediately on the, the, the quality of the soil, the exposition of the vineyard are very important. And this is why the Grand Cru and Premier Cru are better. But we can't uh, work only with Grand Cru and Premier Cru. Uh, for the Cuvée Paradis, we wait the, the edging, the bottle, uh, the bottle go edging, because if I sell the bottles after 15 months, the legislation is 15 months in the bottles. If I use only Grand Cru and, and Premier Cru and I use, uh, and uh, we keep the bottle 15 months, we, we say he's crazy, he's, he's too young, he's not ready to drink. The Grand Cru and the Premier Cru are really a good potential to, uh, to aging. This is for me very, very important. And after you have more minerality, the wine is more pure, the wine is more long. Uh, in the final, when you test uh, Grand Cru, you can have uh, the, the flavor, the fruit flavor, very long time inside. 
all those small things give something different. But for me, uh, you speak ab about wine. And for me, it's important because some people, uh, excuse me for people, excuse my English, please. But some uh, person uh, think uh, champagne is only for the party, champagne is bubbles, champagne is easy to drink, we can keep champagne longer, but it's not true. Champagne is wine. And if you make a, a good wine, after you have a second fermentation in the bottles and you have a, a champagne and bubbles in the bottles. But the good champagne is, is before a very good wine. And uh, to the winery, Alfred Grassin Winery, we, sp we speak about wine from champagne. And I'm very happy when I hear you say wine, you speak about your wine. I love it. So what we got out of that was Grand Cru and Premier Cru fruit, no malolactic fermentation, wood vinification, first pressing, and the most important fact is champagne is wine. And that's a great way to sell these wines on the street. Nicola, right behind you is uh, vineyards. The vineyards are gorgeous. Can you tell us a little bit about the soil and the vines? Uh, the vines, but uh, is is more difficult uh, for me in English. But uh, I I try to do. Uh, Man Valley is more. We speak about Man Valley wine because it's Man. The soil is more black. Uh, uh, it's not argile, but the soil is more black. If you go in the Grand Cru and Premier Cru, uh, if you look the Champagne region on the the on the ground under the floor uh, the floor. Really, you can feel more choke. This is very, very important. After you have the three different grapes, uh, the the Pinot Meunier adapt very good in the in this soil on the uh, the clima from uh, Valais de la Marne. Chardonnay is very, very interesting for the Côte des Blancs because in a choke you can feel something very delicate and you can have uh, uh, the rich wine with the minerality. And the Côte des Blancs is very, very delicious or gorgeous for this. Pinot Noir uh, in a in a Montagne de Reims uh, is not. Uh, I can't say I don't like Pinot Noir because some one time my father say I, he loves Meunier and the the journalist write Mr. Jagger uh, don't like Pinot Noir but we love the Pinot Noir for the blend. Uh, if I drink 100% uh, uh, Chardonnay or 100% Pinot Noir or 100% uh, Pinot Meunier. Sometimes I prefer Chardonnay and Pinot Meunier because uh, for me Pinot Noir sometimes is heavy and uh, is interesting like a spicy uh, when you do a kitchen, uh, salt and pepper and uh, more spicy. Uh, Pinot Noir I use uh, so, uh, but very delicate to give the power on the body to the wine. But uh, for the soil, excuse me, because you won't see the choke uh, on the on the, my camera, but uh, really, the Man Valley is not really nice for the choke. <laughs> I understand? I love that the body comes, the body and the the spices come from the Pinot Noir. I really, I I love the way you explained that that the finesse and the, and the body, the Pinot Noir, and the fruit is the Pinot Meunier, and is one of the reason in our Brut Classic or Brut Classic Rosé. We use a lot of uh, Pinot Meunier, not a lot, but minimum 25, sometimes 30 percent, because Pinot Meunier is more ready, is ready to drink quickly. But when you work with Boro, you have tannin in your wine. When you work with uh, no malolactic fermentation, you have acidity in your wine, and uh, this tannin and acidity is two possibility is antioxidant. Uh, you know oxidation, and this is a uh, uh, medicine. Uh, uh, or medi uh, you, I don't know the word for uh, excuse me, uh, medicament. Je sais pas si tu me m'aider, uh, Sabrina, pour ça. The medicine, like a medicine. Medicine, okay. Uh, medicine, uh, acidity, and tannin is the medicine for o future oxidation, and uh, of course. Uh, if you respect the quality of the grapes, if you respect the work of your grower, with the Pinot Meunier, you have a lot of fruit and uh, you can feel the fruit in our Brut Classic. This is very important grapes for me too. Fantastic. If you would have said La Medicina, I would have known. I don't speak French. I'm sorry, only Italian a little bit. So. Medicine <laughs> is like... Uh, 
<laughs> it's like what we want for the COVID. <laughs> exactly, exactly. We could use a little uh, medicine right now. Uh, tell us a little bit about the difference between the two cuvées and what makes Paradis uh, more exclusive and more uh, expensive. Uh, you know, uh, Champagne uh, region today is uh, Champagne Day. And I, I'm, I know this is uh, early for you, but for me, it's time to drink a glass of champagne. I open a glass of uh, Brut Classic Rosé, a bottle of Brut Classic Rosé. This is really two different wine. Why? Because with the the Classic Rosé, I try to have something very uh, easy to drink, very creamy, uh, very fruity. And uh, for this, I use more Pinot Meunier in uh, our uh, Brut Classic. For the Cuvée Paradis, is different. I want something more strong. Uh, I want uh, aging potential. And for this reason, on the Cuvée Paradis, I use only grapes come from Grand Cru and Premier Cru. The base of the wine for the Cuvée Paradis Rosé is the same quality of the Paradis White. It's exactly the same for the Brut Classic. I use the blend of the Brut Classic White and I use after uh, red wine from Champagne. For the red wine, we use only uh, red wine come from Grand Cru, uh, come from Bouzy in the both cuvee, because uh, Bouzy uh, is very interesting for the fruit of for the body. I love this uh, red wine to to make uh, the 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 blend rosé. But of course, the cuvee Paradis we use grapes more expensive. For give you an idea. Uh, I don't know if you have an idea about the price of the grapes in the Chardonnay, Grand Cru, in the Pinot Noir, or in the Pinot Meunier. Have you an idea about, about that? Cheese. No, we'd love, we'd love to know about it. Go ahead. Last year, we pay near 8 euro for one kilo in the Côte des Blancs. We pay approximately 7.2, 7.3 uh, in the Montagne de Reims, donc eight, near 8 euro for the Chardonnay, Grand Cru, Côte des Blancs. We are around 7.2 euro for the Pinot Noir, Premier Cru in Montagne de Reims. And the uh, Pinot Meunier is around 6.4, uh, sometimes 6 uh, is, is a cheaper. But uh, why? Because it's not Grand Cru and Premier Cru. And in the Cuvée Paradis, of course, we use only the Grand Cru and Premier Cru because I want this edging potential and I want this body. And when you taste the Brut Classic, you have very something very fruity. But when you taste the Cuvée Paradis, you have something with more body. Uh, the wine is more long. Uh, the wine is more, you can uh, have more spacey. And uh, this is really two different Cuvées. And Another re reason why the bo the bottle is is more expensive, of course, is the quality of the of the grapes. The quality of the work stay same the same because I work in the borough and I never do malolactic for all the wine for Alfred Gracia. But the shape of the bottle is very important. And if you look the shape of the bottles, Brut Classic and shape of the bottles Cuvée Paradis, you can look something very interesting because the neck is very different. And the neck is really more fine for the Cuvée Paradis. And why is more fine? Why we design this bottle in uh, in this way? Because if you uh, uh, excuse my English, but if you your neck is smaller, you have less oxidation in your bottles. Why? Because the exchange is different if you have a big one or the small one. And uh, is one of the reason the bottle is different and why is the re and very expensive too. But uh, because it's very unique, this is a, a bottle only for Alfred Gracia, not for another house of champagne. And we develop a, this bottle for us. And of course, this is very small quantity when you when we produce and it's a little bit more expensive. But you must remember one thing very important: the grapes. The selection of the grapes is very different for the Cuvée Paradis or for the Brut Classic. Excellent. And can you give us a little bit of a taste profile between the Classic Rosé and the Rosé Paradis? With the Classic Rosé, uh, this is one of my wife love. Uh, this is one uh, of my mother love when uh, on my daughter because it's very fruity. 
it's very creamy, it's very easy to drink. You can drink uh, with uh, strawberries, you can drink for aperitif. This is uh, elegant, but uh, with, uh, with the fruit. With the Cuvée Paradis, it's different because you can drink with aperitif. I think it's not a good idea to start with the Cuvée Paradis Rosé. But uh, sometimes I, I, I did that. But uh, you can go very easy on the table uh, with some cheese like a Comté after a nice maturity. Uh, you can go uh, on, not, not really on the dessert, but if you have uh, some meat come from uh, Gibier. Excuse-moi, Sabrina, je vais avoir besoin de ton aide. J'ai du mal à, à parler de ça. Euh, euh, tu peux dire euh, ben, euh, Tu sais, comme des faisans ou des choses comme ça. Tu sais, des gibiers euh, qui volent, mais plutôt pas qu'à viande blanche. Euh, euh... Tu peux aller sur la viande, etc. Enfin, voilà, c'est. Euh, et j'ai du mal à m'exprimer là-dessus. So, so, I think it's more on like the duck family. Uh, something oh, like, you know, very, gaming. like, very gaming. This is gaming. Yes. Yeah. And this is a rosé, not only for aperitif, but really for the table. This is a, the gastro gastronomic wine for me. It's a real pleasure to drink a glass of Cuvée Paradis Rosé and heat in the same time. Not with fish, of course, but with red meat. Uh, uh, Sabrina, I explain to you, excuse uh, my English, but you, you can very have a nice, nice time, nice pleasure with a, a bottle of Cuvée Paradis Rosé on your table. And Cuvée Paradis Rosé is a vintage. Uh, this is one of the big difference with uh, the, the Brut Classic. Brut Classic is a blend of the three grapes, but grapes from different years. Uh, uh, for the Cuvée Paradis Rosé, this is vintage 07. 07 is a very, very good vintage in Champagne because it's a very hot year. And for me, it's very interesting because hot year, like this one, because uh, I remember I look my fish before. Uh, but I remember in uh, in 2007 we start the harvest 24 in August. This is very early in the season, and when you have a nice maturity on the grapes and uh, no malolactic fermentation, you can develop a wine from Champagne, very nice wine from Champagne. I love the Cuvée Paradis Rosé, and remember Paradis Rosé is only one year. This is the first cuvee we do with one, one year, and 07 is very important for me because it's the year uh, my father go in retire, and it's the year I started to be a winemaker after 17 years with him. What a great history. What a great uh, legacy as well. Hey, by the way, how was Harvest this year? Harvest was very nice, very good. Uh, we have very hot summer. We have a nice maturity in the grapes. Uh, for the Chardonnay, is a uh, is uh, crazy because Chardonnay's grape have a exponential uh, way for the maturity. And the maturity block uh, 29 August, something like this. And we must wait longer. But we start uh, for my personal vineyard. We start the harvest 20 in August. Is the first time. For my personal vineyard, I, I finished the harvest in August. But uh, we have a nice maturity. We have just enough acidity when you don't do malolactic fermentation. And uh, we have uh, uh, sanitary grapes are very, very, very good. No rot, nothing. Uh, the, the wine is can go perfect, I think. We are lucky because 18 was a, a very good year. 19 is a very good year on 2020 uh, is a very good year too we we have nice harvest now i started yesterday to drink uh, the clear wine with my father uh, and the uh, uh, the wine is not ready to drink because we 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 can feel yesterday the wine is really closed and it's a good sign because when the wine is uh, go with a nice maturity, uh, easy to drink uh, in uh, in October, you can feel the wine have a small potential to aging. But I think we can make very, very, very nice wine this year. This Fantastic. is uh, the the part of uh, 
is the difficult year for the world, but if the wine is good, maybe it's, it's better. <laughs> there you go. At least we have something <laughs> positive to look forward to. Everyone wants to see your vineyard behind you there. Everyone's typing. They want to see the vineyard. They want to see the vineyard. Is that possible or is it going to get too tricky? No, it's possible. Uh, also, while you're think... walking over there, Nicola, um, what, oh, wow, beautiful. What's planted in your vineyard, in your vineyards? I, I try to switch with Fuji. You can hear me? Okay. Yeah, okay. we can hear you, I but switch we can't see you because... Oh, there you, there you are. There you are. Okay. There you are. Wow. Okay. Look at that. That's Please. beautiful. A few minutes ago, we have sun. Now I start to go to bed. <laughs> Excuse me, English. But this is uh, where I live. This is the uh, Man region. Uh, in the bottom, you can see my brother's vineyard. This one just here. This is my one. Uh, I have only 0 0.2 hectare here, but uh, it is nice for me. And this is uh, Pinot Meunier's grapes. Around me, you have only Pinot Meunier. So Meunier, Meunier is uh, growing very well there in the Marne, and it seems like uh, you really enjoy that that varietal, Meunier. And uh, very well. And uh, one of particularity, uh, particularity of Meunier, when the vineyards start, uh, uh, comment tu dis les bourgeons, Sabrina? Tu sais quand la vigne commence à pousser? Like the buds. The well, yeah. When, when the birds Buddy. start. Uh, example, if the bud start uh, the, the second in April, uh, Pinot Meunier start uh, the sometime seven days after the Chardonnay or the Pinot Noir. On the, the Mount Valley, if you see here in the bottom, uh, this is a, a west direction here, and uh, we have sometimes wind and very cold wind in winter, and uh, it's better if the bud don't start too early. And it's one of the reasons in the Valley de la Marne, too, we have some a lot of Pinot Meunier. Uh, uh, is regu regularly, uh, the, the, the Chardonnay uh, in Valley de la Marne, uh, when the temperature go under zero in winter, is a problem. The frost is a Very problem. Very good. Very good. Uh, uh, Nicola. Thank you so much for your time today, Mr. JJ. It's so wonderful to be with you in your backyard of your house. I think this is a, an amazing view. We are so happy. We're so happy to have you uh, with us, and and it, it's just amazing to be with with you live in your own vineyards, the winemaker of Alfred Gracien. I'm going to hand it back over to you, Nicola, for the for the close. Okay, I want to say thank you very much, all. I hope you understand my English. I want to say happy Champagne Day. This is Champagne Day today. I, uh, if you have one bottle, uh, not maybe this morning, but this afternoon, you can make like me. Thank you all, and uh, see you maybe in France. I hope in US soon. Thank you, Nicola. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. Have a great, great Champagne Day. Thank you.